good. This is Endless Phase 2 Awakening, and we are playing as the Unfallen. I just want to take a second to thank everybody for the comments on the first episode. I'm glad that other people are as excited about this playthrough as I am. And I also want to take a second to thank Sedgehammer and Resilence for providing some tips and things that I do need to keep in mind going forward with the, un with the Unfallen. I can't remember who said it too, and I did say this, but I want to clarify. You can use multiple vine ships to increase the speed at which you entwine systems. Which is why I think we have one in queue. We have two in queue. We've got two in queue already. As soon as our production finishes, we're going to get a couple vine ships to speed up that process. Now, the other thing that I do want to keep in mind, and this was from Sedgehammer, is that pirates will interrupt our ability to entwine stuff. So we really need to be prepared to deal with them early. Which makes the fact that we have efficient shielding here in queue already a good idea. Now, the, the tips from Resilence were numerous and all quite brilliant. And they'll kind of play out more as we go through the game. Uh, a lot of them have to do with the unique bonuses and things that the Unfallen have that I didn't recognize. And I can't remember if it was a trait that I was specifically looking at or what, but uh, where is it? It's like plus 15%. Oh, I bet you it's a law. I think it's a unique pacifist law. So let's take a look at their pacifist laws here. No, it's not that. It's not fair trade, Bill. It must be something we get through our quest. Uh, essentially, it gives us a huge bonus to dust and science per empire that we're at peace with. Also, we get pretty decent dust building and trade company building because of our ability to entwine systems and essentially establish peace with people and keep those systems protected. Uh, let's go ahead and... That's fine. We already knew that was coming. Keep on scouting. Now, aggressively scouting here as the uh, Unfallen does make a lot of sense because if we can identify the best systems, then we can kind of entwine our way through them first. Definitely a more ideal situation than us sort of just clopping around and, and grabbing anything in front of us. We do also want to keep an eye out for things that are going to be choke points. For example, if we lost Perseus here to pirates, that would be kind of problematic. Okay, let's keep it going. Early turn's gonna go fast. I'm super, super excited, guys. I... Oh, population boost is done. Can we do it again? Not quite. Not quite. We do not have the resources yet. We will soon, though, because we are working on entwining Nakos, and as soon as that's done, we should be able to colonize the steps there. I believe that we're working on that tech. Yes, we are. Four turns out from that tech. Neutral hackers are active. That means minor factions at this point, but pirates soon. Oh, boy. Who are you? That is a United Empire Settler, so the UE did start near us. Uh, this could actually be kind of problematic. It does look like we have a minor faction up here. So we're going to want to make first contact with them relatively soon. Getting them in our empire is going to be key, especially with the UE right here. We don't really want them to snatch those, those minor factions up on us. Now the other thing I want to make sure we get is this right here, the Endless Research Park and Endless World. I love this wonder. I always forget the name because it's so long, but this is my favorite wonder in the game, mainly because of the 25 happiness for 10 turns. That's even better on other empires. Uh, for example, for the He Show, that gives plus, I believe it's plus one key per turn, which is huge. So it's basically just the best thing to get early if you can, and we're already very close to being on the way with our Hyperium and Titanium. The problem is that it does take quite a few turns to finish. So what we want to do is make sure that we get most of our basic improvements done first and then really, really hone in on that. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Of course, we want to get a couple vine ships out first. And I do want to look at the design of those vine ships because it was suggested to me that we don't really need defenses that just waste some production and makes them take longer. We can kind of get away with just engines and a vine beacon here. Uh, if they get caught, they're probably going to die anyway. They have no weapons, so that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go ahead and put two of our upgraded vine ships here. Hopefully that they'll go a little bit faster now. I didn't actually pay attention though, so I, I can't tell you if that increased the speed at all. Hopefully it did though. Hopefully it slightly increased the speed. If it increased it by just one turn, it was worth it. Hey, the Bas Rixo. So this is one of the newer minor factions. This society evolved in the detritus of what is essentially a garbage planet. As myriad forms of waste were dumped in the world for centuries, whatever starfaring race created this ecological disaster, we do not know. It was probably the Endless. Come on. 
but eons after their passing, a new sentient life, perhaps remnants of the original civilization, perhaps something else that evolved in the mutation-rich environment came to be. Starting from ragged scavengers to becoming pragmatic and efficient recyclers, they have learned to turn garbage into gold, and planets lucky enough to welcome them will quickly see the effectiveness of their methods for recovering resources. So they are a temperate faction, and they have bountiful byproducts, which turns food into production. That is a solid miner for us, guys. This is a good, good miner for us to acquire first. Uh, so we definitely want this. The Empire. Yeah, 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 the Empire welcomes us. We don't really care. I think we want to pick up trusted brokers here. Cost is going to be 10 per turn. We have 39 per turn coming in. So we can actually afford that. And it's going to reduce the cost of these praise actions. Now, I don't really want to wait Though, I kind of want to get this rolling right now, because getting this minor faction is going to be huge for us. Bountiful byproducts for us would be massive. So we're going to go ahead and praise them right off the bat. We're just going to go full force for it. Uh, the Empire is here. We have met them. We can potentially get the peace Empire with them now. Hi there. All those who share its no, ideas. no, come on. We're friends here. We can all be friends. Let's have a, a map sharing agreement. How about that? I'll give you map sharing, no? No map sharing. Uh, how about five titanium? Five titanium is probably pretty appetizing this early on. Huh? Huh? No? Okay, fine. Yes. Be that way then. Be that way. I wish we could afford to offer them a trade agreement, but that's going to have a per turn cost that I don't think we can necessarily... Actually, we could have maintained that. That's crazy. Um, okay. So we're not necessarily going to be able to get peace with them right now. It's just not an option. We could force peace with them for 282, which is hilarious. But we'll wait a second. We'll wait a second, see if we can get peace with them the easy way instead. I mean, honestly, forcing peace with them wouldn't be terrible either. Currently, our bonuses for peace are limited to not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, I mean, we actually probably have some faction bonuses for being at peace. Let's go ahead and check those out. Yeah, we'd get some happiness from it. Uh, we'd actually get some ship damage from it, which would make dealing with the pirates that are coming easier as well. Okay, we are probably going to force peace. I'm curious how long force peace lasts, though. That's that's a bigger question. Speak up. This puts the Empire into a status of peace. All hostilities anywhere on the galactic map will cease, and more advanced diplomatic negotiations will be possible. Uh, we have enough influence. We're just going to force peace here. What should the Empire yep. Make of yep. You're a sly one. You. you can be surprised all you want, but we're at peace now, buddy. We're at peace now, and that means our empire is going to be a little bit happier here. We're up to 80% happiness. I love it. And our ships are actually going to be better at combat, which is crazy. Like, I love that mechanic. By being peaceful, we're actually better at waging war. Go figure. Uh, that being said, we will have efficient shielding next turn, so we should build our first combat ships then. Ugh, how many turns are we from having Nakos? One turn. Uh, so I don't actually want to start our hack yet, because we can start it from Nakos, and that'll take us up to Den up here. Actually, we won't be able to start it from Nakos, because we will not have a system in Nakos until we finish this. So I guess we'll go ahead and start our hack now. I mean, it's probably going to be about a three-turn difference anyway. Yeah, it's three turns to get there. Uh, so what we know about hacking based on the... And this is something I actually want to monitor based on the document that we found is that our hacking speed per turn is 30 units roughly, I believe. Uh, and then I can't remember, I think it was 60 units through, or no, it was maybe 30 units for a turn across a warp lane. I don't know. What I do know is this, guys. If we hack a system that is adjacent to us with no bonuses, it should take roughly four turns, and that's important because if that is what it ends up being, uh, or if it's even four turns from, say, Perseus to Deneb here, once we hit Deneb, I'm mainly concerned with trying to figure out the cost of hacking as far as hacking units goes when we hit the system, because that's going to be really important for the guide that I'm working on. Because essentially, that's what we need to know. It doesn't matter how many turns it takes us to bounce through a bunch of empty systems. It matters how many turns we need to keep an eye on if they do start to trace us, right? So that's what we're looking for. This is way too long of a hack to really be- Oh, come on. That's annoying. That's extremely annoying. Well, it does make things a little bit easier on us, though. Now we definitely, definitely want combat ships. Although, in all honesty, combat ships may not be the right way to go here. What I think would be better is for us to get... 
Is it here? Titanium AS2 slugs. Yeah. So we really want like big data shipyards and AS2 slugs here. And the reason we want AS2 slugs is because AS2 slugs will allow us to invade more easily. Ooh, interesting. This is considered an unfallen tech for some reason, probably because the higher defense is on planetary guard there. Uh, that being the case, it might actually be worthwhile to go this way and then move into energy weapons since we pick up that mod anyway. We'll see, though. We'll see. Time will tell. The main thing we do know is that we're going to need some combat ships here. That's just a thing. We're going to need them. Why is that a vine ship one? We put vine ship twos in queue. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. This is, uh, this is our first vine ship. We don't need to upgrade this. Upgrading this actually just basically takes stuff off of it. Now the question is, they're going to have a new pirate ship in one turn. We really don't want the vine ship to tango with that. Uh, and our hero ship is up here. We should probably bring the hero ship back down here. That's going to take five turns, though, so it's very unrealistic, I feel. Hmm. Let's finish our route up to Den up here. We're going to scan their anomalies real quick. We'll fire off some probes, and then maybe we'll start heading back. And the reason we're scanning anomalies, once again, is because that will help us to build a little bit more Curiosity Revealed Sea, so that gives us a little bit more influence with them per turn. And now we can fire off a probe down this way. The goal being just kind of to see what we can about what's down that line. And then in the meantime, we'll probably come back here to help with the pirates. It's annoying that we have to do this, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And we do have access to our combat ships now, so we should actually start building those out. I wanted Titanium AS2 slugs mainly because they will help us invade faster. But if we don't have those, rather in, in pace of not having them, uh, we need to have some combat ships ready to go anyway to kind of burn down any ships that come off that system. Now very early on, they can have either projectile or energy attacks, so we're going to go with a mix of damage shields here. But for damage type, I think it's probably best just to go with torpedoes. We could go with stuff that's at shorter range, but torpedoes do give us the range advantage if they end up at any range other than long. And I'm a big fan of taking taking advantage of the range advantage. Uh, we could go plasma beams as well, but I feel like missiles are just better than beams at range. Although if they are projectile, they will have flak for them, which can greatly reduce their damage, so maybe not. Maybe we go beams, or not beams here, but... Uh, Lasers. Lasers are okay. Lasers are real, real good at medium range. Uh, we don't have to get super close like we would with projectiles. Although this also means that we don't have any flak, although we do have a good bit of armor here, so I'm not super worried about flak. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll just call these cheap heat, because that's what we always call our first throwaway ships. Uh, and then we'll also potentially want to create at least one support vessel, just to kind of see what we can do with it. Actually, wow, I think our support vessel in some ways is better than our assault vessel. For example, we can have two engines on our support vessel and a couple of shields, only one weapon, and that is a drawback, but at the same time, uh, being able to move quickly and get where we need to go is kind of a benefit. Hmm. Yeah. And this is going to be our cardboard shield for this game. Uh, I just like those names. I think they're they're pretty clear on what they are. Okay, so let's go ahead and send our vine ship over here. We don't want it to stay on Nakos, because if this spawns a pirate and they send it down, they will kill it. Uh, we have some more vine ships coming out. It may be the time to put our cheap heat and our cardboard shield into queue, though. And we should have four CP available right now, so we'll do one of those and three of these. And let's see how quickly we can pop those out. One turn two turn two turn okay that's not bad so we can get all of those out in three turns we can also finish a vine ship in one so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna get our second vine ship out first then we're gonna put out a fleet so that we can go deal with the pirates and then we're gonna put out another vine ship We'd rather be expending our vines out this way so that we can wrap Denim and take that minor faction, but because of the pirates spawning right here and grabbing this choke point, it's actually really problematic for us. I guess I should have stationed a ship there because I think that'll prevent them from spawning there, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Okay, ending our turn, we definitely want to stay pacifist. Yep, pacifist is where it's at, please. All the pacifism. Thank you. Okay, so we're pacifist, scientist, industrialist. This is not a bad thing. This is actually a very, very good set of laws for us to have. 
Uh, especially since we could potentially drop the anomaly law we have now to pick a better one. I always, uh, this is unexpected entropy. An emissary from the academy arrives dressed formally. They only agree to speak to speak or communicate in public venues while being recorded. This is no ordinary discussion. It appears that the head of the academy is indisposed and various organizations within the academy are beginning to operate with a certain degree of independence. You are provided with a few names, a list, a small explanation, really a marketing brochure on the academy structure and organization. Once the discussions are over, you place an encrypted call to the hero in your employ who is visibly uncomfortable. You understand, they say. We are beings of exceptional power. We are trained to seek only strength and knowledge, but some seek more, you finish. Yes, and there are associations, fraternities within the academy, theoretically just clubs for heroes with shared interests. Those who seek power often use them for leverage, however, in research, training, exploration. None of this is shocking, though it makes you uneasy. But at least as they lack access to resources, you say, they are not a threat, at least not to friendly empires. Your employee nods as if agreeing and prepares to end the discussion, then at the last second changes their mind. They add, remember that there are unclaimed places of enormous wealth out there and everyone is starting to look for them. Or look at them. The transmission is terminated, leaving you curious and concerned. So every time I get this one, there's just no, no question for it at all. Seek the unclaimed places, need unique constellations. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen the mapping one. I may have, but it's rare. Uh, so we could do this one, investigate 10 curiosities. We get probe microfactory, but I don't like the probe microfactory. I don't think it's very good. Discover four systems outside of your constellation will give us the scavenge ram scoop, which is the best movement module in the game. I'm telling you right now, always take searching. Always, no matter what, I'm telling you. Okay, so we're getting scavenge ram scoop here for sure. Now the thing is, we don't necessarily want to rush to complete that, because when we complete that, we will get another quest, which will have us search for a number of unique systems equal to the current number of unique systems we have, plus one. Uh, so right now we have one unique system. The next time we, dis we discover and are able to set up a colonization on a unique system, that's when we kind of want this to finish. So we can intentionally delay the payoff of that quest in order to do that. And what that will do is it'll net us an extra hero. And we've learned that over the last couple playthroughs. So it's something we definitely want to take advantage of. Here on Nakos, we should now be ready to colonize a couple of steps, which is lovely. Uh, so we're going to go here first. Oh, look at that burb. That is a very weird looking burb. I don't know what the, okay, so what is the natural evolutionary use for that loop around his head? Do they like rack up the burbs? Is, is that how they sleep? Do they like hang from a tree by their head? Uh, it's very strange, but okay. So we have a colony here on Nako's new population collection bonus for the Unfallen. Uh, we're at more pacifist influence. Plus 15% influence on systems with the Unfallen is our next one, and then at 50, we get 50% ownership recovery rate, which means that if somebody does take one of our planets, we can get it back very easily. Um, okay, so Aurora Waves here is actually a benefit. It does cost science, but it is a benefit, make no mistake. So we could definitely go for colonizing the second planet right away. That's not necessarily beneficial, though. It's more beneficial to wait till we kind of get close to this unhappiness right here to go ahead and turn that one on. So what I think we're gonna do, unless there's resources you want. Now we could go here right away to get Transvine, but I don't think there's any point in that right now. I think we're better off just building out our production and things like that first. This is a temperate, it is not a fertile, so we're gonna get 20 here. We're not gonna get that much from Interplanetary Transport Network, so we'll put that second. Uh, and then we want that and that. Perfect. Okay, so we get those rolling, and then we'll colonize this as we need to. And we come back down here. We've got our second vine ship. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. And send it over here to help entwine that system just a little bit faster. I cannot wait, though, until we get scavenge ram scoops to feed up our vine sh or speed up our vine ships. So here, I am going to put endless research in queue just so that we reserve the resources. I don't know that it's going to be before any of these improvements, though. We're probably going to wait. The one gotcha to that is that we do want to watch right here. If we watch right here, we can see where we're at. As soon as we see that we're not number one in this, we need to put it in queue. We need to put it in queue, and then we really have to hope that we make up the difference in production. But I don't think that'll be a problem because we do grow population faster than pretty much everybody else. Okay, so we lost our ecologist law, which is fine because we don't really want it anymore anyway. Now we're more inclined to go Dirty Hands Act or New Colony. New Colony actually could be really, really wonderful for us here because we have just acquired a New Colony. I don't know if that'll kick in 
retroactively, though. I believe it does. I believe that will kick in retroactively, so it would provide 20 food to a new system, which I believe Nakos qualifies as. We can definitely check. Let's try that out. Uh, the main reason I want to try it out is because Dirty Hand Act is amazing. It is so amazing early on when you're doing stuff like this. I mean, it's amazing over here when we're doing stuff like this. It's just super beneficial. However, the additional food would make population grow even faster. Currently, we have 32 food here, so let's go ahead and turn that law on and check our food next turn. We're looking for it to be 52 next turn. That would be very nice. Uh, it would help us gain more population there very quickly. More population is the fastest way to increase your overall Fidzy on planets. Hostile trace is detected. Uh, show location. Okay, so they're tracing us at Gistred here. There is a very good chance that they will catch us, so we're going to have to cancel this. That is because they spawned right in the root of our hack. The good news is, though, that we can go Nakos to Gistred, and that is five turns, which is actually what we would expect. We would expect four turns, maybe some additional if they have defenses. Five turns seems like an actually perfect measure based on what we've discovered in the... Uh, the XML of the game. So that's encouraging. That means that that XML that I found may actually be a perfectly accurate source for me to sort of pull numbers from and assess things for our hacking tutorial in future. Uh, Unfallen population has grown on Sylphie and they do have 52 food here which did cut our population growth time in half. That is massive right there. That's gonna make a big big difference for that system very quickly. First cheap heat is out. Military ship price has decreased. You want to come up here and make sure that we're not out of our praise territory here. We really, really need to make sure we stay ahead of the UE with Denim. We really need to, because if the, if the UE gets ahead of us there, they will absolutely assimilate that faction. And the bigger issue for us is that I believe we actually have to entwine a system before we can assimilate the miner. So we have to get rid of these pirates quickly. Like, we do not have time to wait with these pirates. They've got to go. Uh, we will invade them as soon as our hero fleet lands, I think. I would like to have our full fleet over there, but if we can't do that, that's okay. We just need to get rid of them. Hopefully, with our two vine ships here, Indusa will start to entwine a little bit faster. Okay, we're cordial with the Basrixo now, which is great. Hostile trace detected. Uh, that's fine. Your trace is going to be done in roughly... Well, it was going to take us five turns to get here, so you could say two and a half. I don't know if that goes up or down. Like, I don't know if it rounds up or down. But either way, it's we're still going to get caught, so we basically have to cancel this, but we can't afford to cancel it, so we're just going to let it go. It was a mistake to hack directly here, but I was honestly just trying to test that out. Uh, okay, Unfallen Population has grown, that's great. New military techs have been unlocked, or rather a new military stage. Uh, so we do have two more CP on Empire, which we can see if we click on any of our fleets now. So we are up to seven, which means we could put out some more combat ships. Before we do that, though, I do want to get our third vine ship out and get that rolling. Uh, you guys can go on ahead, catch up to your buddy. And we are in need of some new technology. Okay, so our next technology here is going to be an interesting decision. Denark University is a very, very nice improvement. However, the catch to Denark is that... We're already going to be building a wonder here. We don't really need another wonder. So I think what we should be looking at is colonization techs here. So Toxic and Snow are great options for us, as are... what else? Ice and Baron. Baron, I think we can get right now if we go here. Yes, we can. Uh, so Toxic and Snow. Snow we can also get if we go here. Eukaryotic Sap will unlock our fleet speed booster, which is wonderful. Baryonic Shielding will give us access to Savannahs, which we don't really have any of. Hmm. The problem is Baryonic Shielding also gives us Warp Drive, which lets us open free movement, which is very important. Colonize Arctic, colonize Ice. So if we go Snow here, we'll also get access to Ice. If we go here, we're going to get access to Baron, but we're also going to get an improvement that we can't really do anything with for a good while. Uh, so let's take a look at which planet would be most appetizing here. The barons are cold steriles. That's not really great. Did we have a baron in this system as well? I don't think we did. No, we had a snow. So snow would allow us to expand our home system more. If we did want to capitalize on something here, ice would be preferable because we can't get the toxic just yet. I think snow makes more sense because we're going to cap out this system before we cap out Nakos. So we're going to go for the snow right here. I believe that's it. Yeah. 
So snow there, and then we may want to come over here and grab Astro Finance or something else in the Dust branch. Uh, Multi-thread management here is not a bad idea. It will give us access to the Intergalactic Supermarket, but we're also not in need of more wonders to build. In fact, right now, it's more beneficial for us to pick up technologies that don't require us to build improvements at all because we do have some improvements already in queue. We're not in any need of more improvements. So we could go with Focus Plasma here is actually a good idea. That'll give us Titanium AST Slugs. We could also go Autonomous Construction, which would give us mobile energy weapons, which is armored troops for invasions, which would still, once again, speed up our invasions. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have things in queue building to go ahead and grab those so we don't end up wasting queue or ending up with like a ton of things we can build and nobody to build them because that's not beneficial to us either. Select and merge here. Three turns to finish Indusa, and we should have another Vine ship within the next four. Okay. That is acceptable. Vaguely acceptable, but acceptable. Uh, you're already here, so you can just go ahead and do that. I don't want to start the invasion yet, because we only have 100 manpower here, but very soon we'll have enough manpower to actually full-on invade them. And that will be the beginning of that. I'm so irritated. They spawned, like perfectly in the worst spot for us. Just perfectly in the worst spot. Okay, get our fleets together. Cool. Battle here with our full fleet. Just in time, our fleet converged on that system. Uh, they are primarily energy weapons. Oh, actually, nice mixture here. So they've got some energy and some projectile. Good thing we're tanked against both. Uh, and then we are primarily energy, and they have zero... De well, this guy's energy defenses, so that's actually not great for us. Hmm... Medium range is where we want to live. Shield penetration on weapon modules could actually help us here. It will help one of them as well, but we have quite a bit of shielding versus his attack, so I think it's probably fine. We're going to go with Plasma Distortion here. Uh, we can watch this. We can watch this. I haven't watched any of the Unfallen fleets fight before, so this is kind of cool. And I think what I'm going to try doing this time, I know I normally use tactical camera because we want to see how everything's playing out, but I think if I hit space here, we can just see, yeah. I like this pseudo-tactical camera here, too, where we can see the health of our ships and their ships as combat sort of goes. Interesting. I'm not sure what these icons right here mean, though. Hmm. I guess we'll see as combat unfolds. I wonder if that's like a manpower... No, manpower is the bar underneath. Interesting. Oh, okay, so the one on the left looks to be armor. And the one on the right is shields. Oh, that's really cool that you can watch it like this. Okay, so we are winning this confrontation so far. We can tell just by looking at the heads-up display on the bottom. 35 damage. Oof. Bye bye Okay, one of their ships is down. One of our ships is in danger. And I, I have to believe that's the questioner, our scout ship, that's hurting the most. But I could be wrong there. I think it is, though. If we, if we look here, yeah, it is our scout ship that's hurting the most. It's not really designed for combat, but hey, it's okay. We came out on top. We destroyed the pirates. Our ships are absolutely gorgeous. I really like that overlay now that I know how the, the armor and shielding and stuff works, because we can actually get more detailed information by looking at that. Uh, that was actually kind of cool. Okay, so we're going to merge all of these ships together into a fleet here just for the usefulness of it. We can scan down some stuff on Gistrid if we'd like, and we might as well at this point. There's a Guardian there. We don't want to scan that. We also don't want to scan that. I guess we're not scanning that. Instead, what we're going to do, and this is what I actually want to do, is fire off a probe that way. Maybe that way, too. We're basically just firing off a bunch of probes here, because we're not going to be able to do much scanning and stuff since we will be invading this system. We do have the numbers to successfully invade here, though. Uh, preemptive bombing here is not a terrible plan. It does give us a slight advantage. I'm not sure that we wouldn't gain more advantage from going Blitz here, though. So let's go Blitz. I, I think we'll go Blitz. It makes more sense to me. Minor victory, but we did take away a large chunk of their manpower. And the number one thing here is we just want to get rid of them. Two turns until that's done. We should have a Vine ship by then. Uh, and our first Cardboard Shield is out and on its way up here to help. Unfallen population has grown on Nakos. That's wonderful. I wonder how many turns that food boost lasts. New colony rule is still in effect. Do we have another loss lot? Out of curiosity, we do not. 
Trusted Broker is occupying that slot, which we could take advantage of right now to go ahead and do some more boosting with these guys because their praise did run out. Lovely. Is there any trading we want to do with these guys or other sort of agreements that might be beneficial right now? Uh, how about... Hmm. No, map sharing doesn't help us all that much here. We're just going to leave it for the moment. Not a whole lot there that we, we really want to mess with. Okay, go ahead and close that. Research has completed on eukaryotic sap. Applied happiness program is in effect. That's just a nice plus five approval on planets. Uh, we do have access to snow planets now. We have the hacking accelerator, which is a big deal, and the H-field fleet accelerator, which is our fleet boosting module. We will want to put that on our hero ship as soon as possible. Now, the easiest way to do that will probably be to go ahead and entwine that system. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until we're done over there. Because we're not going to give up vining this system when we're this close. This, that choke point on Nakos is actually a very big vulnerability for us, in my opinion. In less than 10 turns, stockpile 831 dust in your empire. We can do that very easily. Uh, generate 190 production. We may actually be able to do that very easily as well. Yes, we know we were traced. Uh, minimize that. Lots of things going on. I want to check our production. Oh, wow. 160. So we could get 160 production relatively easily as well. Now that one might be a little bit tougher. Uh, I think we're going to go Horde here though, because we if we complete this as Pacifist, what that's going to do is give us more Pacifist influence, which we want to keep because we want to stay Pacifist. The Galactic Census is coming up, and although you have greater worries on your mind, you remember when one of your wisest advisors once said that a great leader is often judged not by his actions, but by the statistics he leaves behind. Perhaps it is worth investing a bit of effort to leave your mark on history, as the databases will remember. So we're going to go with Hoarding Dust. We want to be remembered. Economic might, more than any other program, will secure your legacy, a massive dust fortune that will never be forgotten. I mean, that is my preferred playstyle, so we're right there. I think I'm beginning to take a shine to you. No trespassing, no demands. I might not need to attend tonight's executions to stay in a good mood. Zalevas, you are a psychopath. You're a psycho, buddy. Uh, okay. So here we're going to blitz. Minor victory. Very close to finishing them off, though. Very close to finishing them off. Unfallen population grows on Sylphie, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Uh, okay. Going into Sylphie here. We do have a vine ship that's going to be coming out relatively soon. How long would it take to make another one, though? Uh, two more turns after that. I think we can definitely live with that. Although we should actually colonize this planet first. And we want to go make sure that nobody else has started on this wonder. They have not. Okay. So we're not in a superb amount of danger of losing that wonder, but we should begin on it very soon if we can. One turn until that's done, that's fine. Alright, I think everything's good for us to go ahead and end the turn. Uh, this will probably be our last turn that we get to end before I've got to take off and go to work though, folks. So let's do it. Oh, hacking is left unassigned. Uh, this is sort of... Well, I mean, they're going to be gone in a turn anyway. So yeah, let's go ahead and hack straight to Denub here. Oh, look at that. The UE is, is starting in on Perseus. That's annoying. That is somewhat annoying. I'm not sure how vining allied systems works, but I think you're allowed to vine allies, so it's perfectly fine. We're at peace with them. We should be able to vine them just fine. Uh, okay, so the Miner Faction will provide you with a good portion of their resources, and a special action will be available if you have the best relation with them. In addition, a quest to assimilate them will be available. That's good. Hostile Trace is detected. We don't care. We're about to basically wreck that system. Yeah, here it is. Bye, guys. 300 dust for destroying that pirate system. And they left a, a relic behind in space, which is awesome. And we have finished the entwine action here. So we're going to bring our vine ships over here and start to entwine Gistrid. Uh, this is a nice little system. Plus 50 influence. I'm not sure if we get those bonuses when we entwine them, but I would imagine we do, which is kind of cool. Uh, that means producing more vine ships to be able to entwine more stuff makes a lot of sense. Unfallen population growing again on Sylphie, which is why we are going ahead and colonizing another planet here. Hopefully that'll take effect rel relatively soon. It'll be three turns from now, that's fine. Uh, Kinetic Enhancer is unlocked, Titanium AS2 slugs are unlocked as well. You have entwined Indusa, lovely. Military ship price has decreased on the market. Well, if we were buying them, that would be excellent. Um, okay. Yes. 
Yes, everything is going to plan right now. I think after we get that, we may actually not do this other vine ship. Yeah. I mean, if we go there, it's 11 turns. I'm just worried somebody's gonna snipe us on that. Like, that is my number one thing. I hate being sniped on that wonder. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this episode, though, folks. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!